We're now being joined by petroleum engineer Zaka Bala. Mr. Zaka? Thank you. A very good evening to you and thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Now, and uh, good evening to all our viewers across the globe. That's right. Now, a single man in Nigeria is playing a very key major role in um, improving the economy of the country. 650,000 BPD of petroleum from a refinery is a lot. I believe you, you, you'd agree with me on this. I totally agree with you, but like it's always the case, I mean, uh, parents can have so many children, but it will just take one child to come up with initiatives and creativity that will bring that family out of the woods. Mm. Like parents will always appreciate it when their children are achieving milestones. It is the same way that government political and economic leaders will appreciate it when corporate citizens achieve milestones. Dangote management or Dangote refinery is a corporate citizen. It's a Nigerian uh, corporate citizen. But what has happened today is something that is worthy of praise and emulation. Nigeria is happy about it. The West African sub-region is happy about it. The continent of Africa is happy about it. Then the global oil and gas community, especially the downstream sector, is happy about it. So can we then say that the countries at Uhuru, you know, with the birth of the multi-billion dollars uh, project, which of course is expected, as I said earlier, expected to uh, produce 650,000 barrel of uh, crude of, of petroleum product per day, 650,000, uh, you know, compared to what the country has been passing through over the years. Is it now safe to say that this is Uhuru? Sure. What has happened is a positive development. The first thing that is going to happen is this. It is going to breach what we call refined petroleum product deficit, which we technically call distillates. Because with the quantity that will be refined by the time you break the components, looking at the quantity of diesel, petrol, kerosene, aviation fuel that we are going to be seeing, then also looking at the products that are going to come from the petrochemical side, I mean, are, it's very clear that uh, the economy is going to improve. But first, what is going to happen is that host community mm. where the refinery is, I mean, you are going to see some changes. There may be road constructions. There may be some form of corporate social responsibilities. There may be jobs that are going to be provided. But I want to also put something across. While we are all celebrating and appreciating what has happened to a corporate citizen, a corporate uh, citizen of Nigeria, we should also remember to ask this basic question. Where did Dangote management got the funds from? As far as I am concerned, they either got the funds from creditors or they got the funds from shareholders. So if they got the funds from creditors, we should expect that one way or the other, Dangote must pay or Dangote management or refinery will, must pay what we call cost of debt, which is, the, which is interest, and they, are, they will be expected to pay the debt. And if they got the funding from their shareholders, Dangote must remain profitable to be able to pay dividend. So. To that extent, we should expect that, yes, Dangote has come on stream, but Dangote as a private initiative is after profit maximization and cost minimization. Mm. And in the process, of course, they will recruit staff, they will take care of host community, but the primary objective is to maximize profit, to be able to remain afloat and minimize cost. Then once that happens, of course, we all know, 
you cannot compare the distance that we Nigeria takes to import refined petroleum products. In the, in the case of Dangote now, I mean, it is nearer home. So relatively, it is going to be cheaper for Nigerians. And it is the same thing also for Dangote refinery being within Nigeria. Dangote refinery is closer to the source of supply. So now that the celebration of commissioning is over, mm. industry watchers and uh, stakeholders and other uh, watchers will now wait for the practical crystallization of activities. Mm. So the next thing in the next one week, two weeks or one month, we will want to find out how will the, in what manner will the crude oil be supplied to the refineries? Will it be through pipelines? Mm. Will it be through rail lines? Mm. Or will it be through tankers and the rest? If it is going to be through pipelines, the next question is, have the pipelines been constructed? Mm. And if the pipelines have not been constructed, when will they be constructed? Mm. If the supplies will also be through rail lines, the next question is, are the rail lines already on ground? If the rail lines are not on ground, when will they be constructed? And mm. if the initial crude will be supplied to Dangote using tankers, then there is every likelihood, if, and it will not be out of place, if we ask this question, that means the Lagos Ibadan Expressway and the other routes again that go through Epe are likely to experience serious traffic congestion. And when you look at the load of the product, then there is every likelihood also that the roads, Lagos Ibadan Expressway and the Epe Expressway are likely to undergo some torture from loads. But the basic thing, when you look at it, regardless of how you look at it, is a win-win situation for Nigeria. It's a win-win situation for the West African sub-region. It's the win-win situation for the African continent. Because there is what we call African unity core values. Remember, one of them is respect for diversity and teamwork. That's right. It will, we must think Africa first. We must have, there must be integrity and impartiality. There must be efficiency and professionalism. And they will need to share information and cross-fertilize it. Don't also forget that one of the objectives of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement is to boost regional integration and boost the economy mm -hmm. of the region, and by extension, the economy of the continent. Mm -hmm. So whichever way you look at it, it is positive for Nigeria, positive for the West African sub-region, and positive for the continent of Africa. And now, while we're celebrating the positives and the key points you've mentioned about the transportation of the crude you know, to the site, while we look at the crisis in managing new, a new outfit, so to speak, like the Dangote refinery, where, of course, when it's in full capacity, it's going to give that 650,000 BPD. You, you understand? Now, looking at the old refineries that government after government have tried to resuscitate without success, what do you think the government should be looking at now, even though we have this new refinery and there's so much confidence on it, uh, wouldn't there be the crisis of abandoning the old refineries for the Dangote refinery? No. Dangote refinery is a private initiative. What I will do is this. I, I mean, personally, I will... I, I want us to have more dangotes in health. We should have many dangotes in education. We should have many dangotes in uh, agriculture. The good thing about having your corporate citizens doing well is because they will comply with the civic responsibility of paying taxes. Mm -hmm. I will expect na the Nigerian government to support dangotes and their equivalents and more dangotes that will be coming behind and help them, even if it is through joint partnership, to construct rail lines and pipeline across the West. What Africa about the region. old refineries? Imagine what should the government they, be uh, looking at now with the old the old refineries cannot be abandoned because I there's a private refinery. Question. 
I'm approaching that. First of all, I'm talking about how Dangote's initiative will be supported. You encourage them, construct rail lines and pipelines across the West African sub-region. Before you know, the depots in those countries will be Nigerian depots. We will have Nigerians working there, Nigerian accountants, Nigerian engineers, and others working. And that will give Nigeria strong economic power. Then back to the Nigerian refineries. Nigerian refineries are state owned refineries or government owned refineries. To the best of my knowledge, there are no moribund refineries in Saudi Arabia. There are no moribund refineries in Libya in the days of Gaddafi. There are no comatose refinery in Malaysia, in uh, Indonesia, in Iraq, and Iran. And to that extent, there is no justification and mm. no reason why we should have moribund state-owned refineries in Nigeria. Mm. The only reason why some of those refineries have been moribund is because there has been leadership docility and we have allowed economic betrayers, economic maruders, and economic vampires to pollute the point and the chain of crystallization of values for our country. But if Nigeria is a member of OPEC, like other OPEC member nations, and they don't have issues of vandalization in their countries, they don't have issues of comatose refinery. I think in the interest of trying to grow and make sure we are a respected country, mm. something should be done about it. Thank you so My much. In case, all that That's... we need to do is to uh, address the inefficiencies. Thank you so much, Mr. Balazaka. Thank you for your time. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.